right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our Earth Week series. I'm Zenobia Godschalk, the SVP of Communications at Hedera, and I'm joined today by Irfan Watkins, who is the founder and CEO, and Matt Smithies, who is the CTO of Dovu. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, very good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having us. Yes, yeah, thank, of Thanks course. for having us. Yeah. Yes, thank you for taking the time. Um, Irfan, we would love to hear, you know, a little bit from you about what is Dovu and what are each of your roles there? Yeah, hi. Um, well, I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of Dovu. And what we're trying to do with Dovu is, is solve a very big problem, but trying to make it as simple as possible, really. Look, a lot of carbon is stored in the world's soil. It's, in fact, it's the largest store of carbon. And what we're trying to do is and what we are you know, building out is a system to enable the farmers to earn, in fact, farm carbon as they would farm any other sort of uh, um, product, whether that's uh, you know, livestock or arable, farm their carbon, earn an yield from their carbon. And to do that, you know, we have the perfect sort of platform with blockchain where we can ledger you know, that that carbon is only sold once, we can prove where it is, we can create a proof of carbon basically, and then we can facilitate the, uh, the, the supply and the demand through, um, through our sort of Dovu platform. And that's really, in essence, what we're, what we're doing. We're cutting out the middleman, we're disintermediating, we're enabling people to purchase carbon directly from the farmer themselves. And Matt, tell us a little bit about your role. You know, we've already heard um, about the about disintermediation. We've already heard about um, distribution. Uh, what are you, you know, most interested in in your CTO role there? Well, um, I guess, quite frankly, I'm kind of involved in trying to make this vision a reality. Um, <laughs> but um, my focus is kind of like just in the in the technology, um, in the research in the development communications uh, with partners, trying to figure out what the best technology is to kind of build this upon. Um, yeah, and I think one of the things I'm kind of passionate about is through this, how can we facilitate income for re um, communities with low income? You know, like in, in the UK, for instance, the average kind of farmer's kind of salary is like 20,000 pounds, like a, a year, like a solution like this could, you know, well, and I'll kind of boost boost that up. Yeah, that's incredible. And you know, why did you why did you think, gosh, we need to put this on a DLT? And you know, related to that, how did you first learn about Hedera? I think the for, for me, it's about um, one of the things that's that's always happens whenever there's a um, a rush of activity in a particular sector is that it attracts bad actors. And the, the selling of carbon has attracted a lot of bad actors. And there's a, there's a lack of trust. How do you know that that carbon hasn't been sold more than once? How do you know that that tree hasn't been planted 50 times and resold you know, to unsuspecting individuals? So, the, um, so trust is, is absolutely essential. And for me, you know, um, I'm a non-technical CEO and founder. You know, so I look at it from the consumer perspective. I look at it from the problem solving perspective. I don't really care about the technology as long as it fixes the problem. It's a servant to the problem. So how do we, how do we build trust? How do we prove that something's sold once and sold once only um, and build a credible solution? And, uh, and, a, and a DLT, you know, a ledger uh, was a sort of perfect example of that. Um, I think it's a perfect use case you know, then we come on to the next bit. How do we do it in a carbon efficient way? You know, so, you know, there's, 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 there's DLTs and there's DLTs. So um, we've got to take a look at that. There's no point in creating a bigger problem by, by creating a larger carbon footprint when you start a ledger or when you start to create these um, our carbon NFTs, which is what we're building. If, if that creates a bigger problem that we're solving, then it's, you might as well pack up and go home. So that led us down to, um, to down the path to Hedera. 
And and Matt, I've just heard your you know your boss, your CEO say, "Hey, I'm not technical, but I need things like a trust layer. I need computational trust, and you know I need it to just work." Um, what was your process from from there, given sort of that mission? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I've worked well. I've evaluated Hedera since um, 2018, and I've tried to kind of follow where the entire space was going. Um, and I have come from like a Ethereum space and a Stellar space um, before that. Um, but even with with that coming, like uh, I kind of started working again with Hedera last year. And what, what one thing that kind of blew me away was the developer accessibility, because for, um, fundamentally you know something that's proof of stake is going to be more environmentally friendly than something that's proof of work but if we want to hire developers to kind of work with us you know going forward do we either try to find someone who's got specialized blockchain technology skills or do we try to find someone who could necessarily fit into what we need as a kind of a broader spectrum um, and that's one that's one kind of facet that kind of fascinates me is the access, accessibility for business and for development. And as you've gone through that process, you know, how, how has it been? What have you learned about the developer side and what have your developers learned? Well, um, <laughs> so basically in, in my spare time last year, I created the Trust Enterprises Serverless API and that was deployed. Um, as one of the SDKs through Hedera. Um, and then we basically took that work and applied it to Dovu and we managed to, to deploy the first um, kind of like the, the timestamp of carbon within basically a day. So, you know, just that in itself, if you compare that to like Ethereum or any other development process, it's rapid, rapid. Um, after which time um, I was involved in other projects um, to do with the hackathon, um, specifically Unibar, and we're going to bring a lot of those items into um, Davy. And Irfan, you you all have a big vision. You have um, you know you have a lot that you want to accomplish. How do you see this rolling out over the next you know say six to twelve months? Yes, I think that the, as I say, Matt has done a huge amount of work and effort in, 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 in um, you know, selecting Hedera as the sort of trust layer, as, uh, working on the, um, working on the NFT that's been minted, you know, within Hedera and the technology layer, you know, we're getting very sort of comfortable about. The next phase really is the methodology of um, counting carbon. So you've got that. Um, so you've, and then the, the, there's plenty of, of sort of demand, you know, um, in fact, there's, there's not enough approved carbon projects on this planet right now for the amount of corporate demand to, uh, to offset. So, um, so from a demand side of it, there's, there's, there's just, there's, I'm very comfortable about plugging into, um, you know, whether that's corporates, whether that's um, government agencies. Uh, or, or, or even individuals, but I don't think that the owner should be on the individual really. Um, so the, um, the focus really is on getting the supply side sorted out. And if you can get the supply methodology done, um, then we're working with uh, different farming organizations, um, some in the UK, some over in Canada at the moment to start with, to, um, to plug sort of, uh, to plug sort of that, that, that supply side into our sort of marketplace. Um, so I think over the next six months, what we'll see is a, um, you know, working examples of carbon that's stored, certified, um, uh, our, our NFTs minted on Hedera, we're calling them CDOs, and that's sort of, uh, and then they're connected into the, um, the demand side, which will be coming, as I say, through corporates and through mainly government agencies and, uh, and with, a, with, with, with some, as a, I, I think individuals, as I say, individuals is not the target. Yeah, and what has been the response, you know, when if you've talked to some of these corporations, I mean, you know, I think we hear a lot about um, corporations, you know, wanting to report that. And like you said, not being, um, not being able to access as much as they would like. 
um, you know, how have they responded to some of these initial, um, you know, this initial outreach from you all? Yeah, well, I think there's a there's, there's there's two things happening right now. You know, there's there's a lot of um, governmental pressure, of course, on organisations in order to reduce um, foot, their carbon output, in order for you know countries to hit their targets that they've sort of set. So what you've got is regulation sort of pushing companies down this path, as well as the consumer as well pushing companies down this path. So purchase power people choosing to engage with, with companies that are actually um, environmentally conscious. So I think you've got sort of really strong sort of, you know, um, you know, winds behind us really in, and momentum behind us to sort of achieve, to achieve what we want to, what we want to achieve. But I think it's also very important to not preach and not be too judgmental in this sort of sector. Otherwise, you only end up talking to the converted. It's sort of you're preaching to the choir. And really what you need to do is to sort of gently nudge and encourage and reward sort of behavior in a non-judgmental way in order to sort of uh, move us all down a certain direction. So what we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible, use as frictionless, you know, um, a frictionless system as we possibly can and really just go with the flow because the flow is going in our direction. That's right, yeah. And, you know, we do hear, um, we hear sort of green and you know energy efficiency meaning so many different things to many different people. So it sounds like you guys are, are meeting people where they are today. It's important, yeah. Um, Matt, back to you for you know one one last question here. Um, any surprises or any things that you have learned along the way? Other things that you would love to share with other development teams as they go on their journeys. <laughs> I think I think I think quite a number of things really. Um, when I when we were kind of exploring with the technology, new kind of ideas and kind of processes kind of come out of the ether. Um, one, one in particular is this concept of um, dynamic NFTs, which we're kind of building the spec for, and it's this combination of using um, HTS with HCS, so that a individual can purchase a token and it can be linked to it like a consensus service topic. And you can just basically provide as much evidence as you want to that topic. And so what this fundamentally means for like soil farmers or kind of carbon project owners is, OK, I have this carbon. Um, how do I kind of prove that I'm a good citizen? How, how, how do I prove that over time um, I, I do tend to my farm? I, I do do what I say I am because you know, if, if, you know, agricultural practices aren't followed properly, then the carbon can get released into the air from the soil. And that actually causes more of a problem. So the way we're kind of using dynamic NFTs is saying, okay, farmers can add evidence over time. And every quarter, every six months, every year, they can actually prove that the carbon is actually gaining or maintaining. Um, and this is actually going to be combined with kind of my Unibar project, which we're going to integrate this idea of using our one-sided liquidity pools, whereby a farmer can say, okay, this is how much to, uh, carbon I have. I'm gonna create a pool for this so that people can buy, but I only have access to, let's say 10% of the uh, funds that are, that are traded with me through these pool tokens. And so every three, six, 12 months, I add evidence and it's proven and it's audited, I get more pool tokens released to me so I can extract more value from my pool and actually gain income over time. And if my, and like even if my uh, carbon increases within my land, then I can mint more tokens to sell. So I can continually gain more income. And so that's kind of the vision from the technical tech point of view. And I, I don't really think anything like that exists. Erfan, as we wrap up here, you know, I want to thank you guys for taking the time today. Um, any last thoughts or things that you would love people to know about Dovu and what you're working on or anything else? No, I think the, um, uh, you know, we, thanks for the opportunity for, for us to share our story. You know, I think that we're, we're hugely excited about what we're, what we're doing. Um, I think that this industry does have a carbon footprint that it needs sorting. You know, we can't hide our heads and bury our heads in the sand. So I think anything that we can do to help would be absolutely fantastic. And I think um, for us, it's about being on a mission, you know, with some great partners like yourselves, you know, trying to solve some really big problems, you know, and, uh, and you know, if, if we're not excited about that, then, uh, then frankly, I don't know why we get up in the morning. 
That's right. Well, thank you so much, Irfan. Thank you, Matt. And we look forward to continuing to follow you on your journey. Thank you.